Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this press conference from the annual meeting of the new champions in Dalian, China. Um, you are watching either here in the room or uh, at home the press conference of the World Economic Forum together with its strategic partner, uh, PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, we're talking today about a very interesting topic. Um, you, you're truly aware that this, uh, that this event is focused very much on technology, on digital technology, uh, on innovation. And uh, so it's a great pleasure to have this press conference on the topic of driving greater value from digital and data. And I'm joined by an expert panel on this particular subject, um, which I'm happy to introduce to you. To my immediate left is uh, Dan DiFilippo. He's the global and US data and analytics leader of PwC, based in the US. In the middle, uh, Scott Likens, who is the leader and analytics, uh, for analytics consulting for China and Hong Kong. He's uh, also based in Hong Kong. And last but definitely not least, uh, we're joined today by Adam Shu, who is the uh, practice lead of consumer and retail industry, and if I'm informed correctly, also the, the lead on digital strategy uh, for China. So we have a global perspective here on the panel. We have a, uh, a greater China and a, a, China, a Chinese perspective uh, on the panel. So I think uh, it's a very good mix. Um, you're very lucky today, uh, both here in the room and, and at the live stream, because what we are getting today is also a sneak preview of a report uh, that uh, PwC has put together that will only be published by the end of this month. So what you're hearing here today is, is really fresh off the press. And without further ado, Dan, um, this report, what is it and what are the key findings of it, yeah. please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for being here. I will take you through some of our key findings. Uh, and I will ask uh, Scott and Adam to uh, also to chime in and to give some uh, local commentary and some color uh, to some of the results that I'm about to uh, take you through. So we are uh, previewing with you our seventh annual digital IQ survey. We surveyed 1,836 senior and C-suite executives. Uh, that that uh, group encompassed uh, more than 50 countries and 50 of those respondents were from uh, here in China. Uh, our, uh, it was an online survey uh, across many, many industry sectors. Uh, our respondents were, broke out 50-50 between maybe business unit executives versus uh, technology executives, and the company size ranged anywhere from 50 million plus in some of the smaller countries to more than 500 million in revenue. So on to the findings. So first, we found that uh, companies in China are spending a significant portion of their revenue on digital investments. In fact, we found that 56% of the group were spending in excess of 10% of their revenue on digital investments, and, and another 10% of the group was spending, uh, was spending more than 20% uh, of their revenue on digital investments. So clearly a significant area of spend here in China for uh, Chinese companies uh, looking to get in the uh, digital game and improve their digital uh, performance. Yeah, Dan. Dan, I'd like to add. I think we've seen this internet boom in China force companies across every industry to focus on uh, what we'd call digital, but almost specifically on e-commerce. It's been uh, across each industry thinking about how can we invest in this technology, but it's been very focused. I think the digital consumer in China has caused this faster than we've seen anywhere else uh, in the Western world. So it's very interesting to watch, but very telling that the investment's being made very quickly here. Thanks, Scott. So moving on and sharing some other uh, information with you. So the business leaders in, in China are actually very confident on their organization's digital vision and capabilities. So we ask them to score themselves or to rate themselves their own digital IQ on a scale that ran up to 100. And we asked them, you know, do you feel your digital IQ is greater than 90, greater than 80, it's, et cetera, and so on down the scale. And more than half of the companies in the, uh, in the group from China rate their digital capability as greater than 80%. It's actually quite high. And on the other end of the scale, only 8% of the companies rated their digital capability as lower than 50%. So the confidence, both on the high side and, and the number even on the low side, expressed more confidence uh, here in the Chinese companies in their own digital capabilities than the global average did for the survey itself. 
And then finally, I would say that um, in the 90 to 100 category, those that rated themselves you know, 91 to 100 in a digital IQ, that was twice as high as their global peers. So clearly the organizations here are spending and investing into the digital space, and they're also feeling quite confident and quite capable around the abilities that they have and, and, and what they've invested in. Yeah, maybe it's, uh, since Premier League talk about Internet Plus, I think it has become a catchword for all of us and uh, for all the enterprise. Regarding awareness and the mindsets for all the Chinese companies, no doubt everyone understands the importance and are really willing to invest. We see that among all our clients in China. Okay, thank you, Alan. But on the other hand, the respondents in China are less confident in their use of data compared to their global peers. So we asked the question around extracting value. And we asked uh, how many are, you know, to what extent are the companies confident that they effectively utilize the data that they uh, capture to drive business value. And in, in China, only 16% of the companies strongly agreed that, that they are doing this effectively. And our global average was 30%. If you take the strongly agree and agree, that they are effectively using data. In China, it's 32%. At the global average, it's 65%. So clearly a recognition that, yes, there's, we're making investments, we have capability, but in terms of actually using the data, effectively utilizing that data to drive business value, we see some drop off there. Some, uh, clearly there's less confidence in that regard than in the digital uh, investment and capability. And it's also important to note that just over half of the companies in China uh, do not consider that their data analytics skills are as highly developed as they need to be. An important finding, I think, and pr but really presenting some opportunity here to, to capitalize on that investment even further than they have so far. Scott, I don't know if you want to make a comment around that. Sure. You know, I think it's exciting. We're in the early days of the maturity of using data science here in China. Um, China's 10 years ahead of the world in the scale of data being created, but 10 years behind in using it. But they've been, you know, the confidence around digital technologies and e-commerce has, has been a boom to their businesses. So data is now the focus. How do we use that data to be more efficient? How do we look at our operations? How do we engage our customers differently? How do we create new products based on the data? You're seeing the internet giants in China use that data, and that will start to slowly trickle into the other um, industries. I think the challenge around talent is very real. We're in the early days of, of getting the universities to, to train and create curriculums around data science. Um, so that will start to mature over the next few years, but again, we have, a, we have to tackle the scale of data, we have to fix the quality of data, and we have to start to integrate that data in real time, and, and that's the challenge ahead for China. We asked another important question to the uh, survey respondents. We asked, how important do you believe effective use of each type of data will be to your competitiveness? And we listed several different examples. And here, where China was really leading the pack was around location-aware data and also around mobile customer interaction data. So clearly, that, that investment is going into this space and is also giving Chinese companies the, uh, the confidence to, uh, to rely on that type of data, and, uh, and, and that will, uh, you know, will bode well, obviously, as, uh, as they go further down this digital and uh, data and analytics path. And I just add, you know, nowhere is it more exciting to think about the Internet of Things. We think about the amount of sensors and, and machines that are going to create information here in China. Capturing that is, is the real opportunity ahead. Understanding the social data, uh, Chinese consumers trust their networks more than brands. So how do we tap into that sort of unstructured data? Uh, I think we're starting to see that. It's still early days, but it's exciting. So we went a bit further on this digital investment question. We asked, well, where are you, where are you spending the money? Where, in what type of areas in the organization? And interestingly, we found some important differences here between the companies that responded in China versus those outside China particularly those in the U.S. Where the, where the contrast was even more stark. So the, the two areas that China seems to be investing in uh, most, most heavily in the digital space is really around revenue growth and also in information technology, which perhaps is not a surprise. And, and, and you might ask, well, where else would you spend? Well, compared to their global peers, where else includes in customer service and customer retention? in operations and some of the support functions that go 
behind and support that revenue growth driver. So very important differences here we see, and I would expect that as, as Chinese companies get a bit further down this road, they too will start to look at that customer space a bit more, as well as the operations and the support functions. Adam? Yeah, no, I think it very much would reflect the transition of the economy. Uh, we used to be very much selling the products, less on the service. But with the transitional economy going into the new growth phase, service is more important then customer experience, operation investment will be really critical. Second, actually, China's doing a very fragmented distributions. Many of the companies do a manufacturing mindset and highly run third party, there's just no data. So a lot of marketing. And we know with the economy growth, the concentration of distribution will increase. With the, especially the digital technology will be much more B2C, directly facing consumer. So where you invest will be really shifting to, as Dan comment, on customer service operations. And then potentially seeing that link between that and revenue growth. So it's not necessarily an either or. Just moving on, these, uh, in the survey we asked the respondents to talk about the skills they see as most important uh, to their business. And here again we saw some important differences between companies here in China and elsewhere. So the companies in China see technology skills as more important than analytic skills. And that was a big difference than what we saw in the global group. So the number one uh, skill that was responded to as, as uh, most important to the business was technology, architecture, and design. Far and away the lead here in China versus uh, the, what the global respondents talked about. On the other hand, data and analytics was, one of, was the leading response from the global group but actually uh, the, the lowest or the least responded to uh, from the Chinese companies. So, you know, here again we see not necessarily a right or a wrong, just to suggest that we see the Chinese companies as we've talked about and seen in other parts of the survey, investing into the technology a bit more, whereas some of the peers from around the world are starting to look more at the analytics that flow from some of that technology investment. I think we're also seeing different strategies as multinationals try to enter China. They realize very quickly they need to adapt to the e-commerce or mobile generation uh, that's here, the mobile-only generation. So the investment in technology is not surprising. I think a lot of companies are looking at uh, platforms like WeChat or, or e-commerce platforms as the first entry. Um, as we start to collect the data, that will be, th be the next wave of, of evolution for these companies. So it's, it's quite early in the days, I think. We also looked at, we asked the, the survey respondents, how do you categorize your approach to adopting new and emerging technologies? And here, what we saw here in China, again, different from the global group, the big drive was towards technology driven. We evaluate many new and emerging technologies that might have an impact on business performance as opposed to business driven. Here in, in from the global group, we saw a greater response in terms of, um, you know, we have a proactive and systemic approach of filtering technology based on defined business criteria. So we do see this difference of being either technology-led or being more business-led and using technology to support that business aim. So an important difference, again, that came through in the survey. We, we also looked at when, when organizations look to identify and explore new or emerging technologies, where do they look to? Where, what's the source of that? And again, another important difference in the survey. Chinese companies, by and large, uh, the, the, the most widely responded to response there was looking at third parties, having third parties help them understand what are some of these technology trends, what's new, what should we be looking at? As opposed to the global group was quite uh, very much more looking at sort of their own data labs uh, or um, dedicated innovation at, you know, on their own facility or from their own resources. So this was another uh, difference that we see um, and, and I would fully expect that over time the Chinese companies will also start to develop that sort of internal capability and start to create, and create some of their own resources that they can use in lab type environment to start to look at the technology that and, and how it fits best in their environment. 
I think as Adam mentioned, as we see this transition into the, the new economy, there's more of a need to be open around innovation, around being more agile and, and uh, reflecting on what's happening to the customers of the economy in front of you. So the, you know, the, the challenge ahead will be bringing this inside, bringing, uh, fostering the right talent and environment to create that innovative uh, culture within the Chinese companies. Right now, they, they go externally for this, uh, but to me, that's not a sustainable strategy. They have to find ways to uh, foster the talent internally and spread a culture of innovation uh, to be successful. So just to summarize, and then we'll, we'll take questions. Um, in, in summary, so the, the companies in China are very confident about their digital understanding and capability, confidently investing into that space, but we do see significant opportunities for growth as, those, as, as these organizations get further down the road. First, around broadening the definition of digital to be more enterprise-wide and less focused on the traditional IT and the technology itself. Secondly, around integrating that digital strategy and the business strategy. So making sure that all C-suite executives are involved in setting that digital strategy. We did see quite a lot of CEO support from the Chinese companies in that digital strategy, but we see, we see it being more widely adopted in, in some, with some of the respondents from outside of China. Thirdly, increasing that digital spend, as we talked about earlier, on some of that customer uh, customer focused uh, investment uh, and looking at operations and some of those important supporting capabilities to help drive that revenue growth we talked about earlier. Taking a more business driven approach to adopting new technologies, as we talked about again, that difference between technology led or business led. And then finally, but importantly, developing the analytic skills and looking more closely at new and existing data sets available to support decision making and to create competitive advantage. So that's just a preview. As, as, as York said, the, the full study will be out and available in a few weeks' time, but a little bit of a preview of some of the findings and obviously some of the findings we see in Chinese companies vis-a-vis -vis the, uh, the global field. Thank you very much. Thank you for, to, to all of you. Before I open uh, the, the floor for questions, and we have microphones here, um, Adam, you mentioned a time period of 10 years to, to closing some of these gaps. Now, um, I've been in Dalian for, uh, two years ago for the last time, and I know that, that the Chinese build things that would take a German to build 10 years and two years. <laughs> um, so uh, what are the factors uh, that could speed up that development? And please, uh, for the other panelists, step in if you want to add something. No, I think um, actually what money can solve the problem, that will be really quick. Look at how Chinese governments, sorry, not governments, Chinese enterprise institutions deploy the resource on the road, on the machines. The hard part for this transition from hardware to software, from IT to analytics, is about people. It's about mindset. It's about knowledge. So I think they take generational shift, taking additional education to make that happen. I don't want to say we are Chinese, we can do everything very quick. This one does take some time mm -hmm. and need help. Yeah. Okay. And, and I would just add, I mean, I think it's a challenge for any company based anywhere in the world. We talk quite a lot about the change management that needs to happen in order to capitalize on some of the data and the algorithms and the techniques and the technologies that are out there. The organization needs to be responsive to new ways of thinking about the issue, to new uh, insights that may come from some of the data. So I think that uh, some of that is not specific to China, and then some of it, as, as you point out, is. Thank you very much. Uh, can I sh have a show of hands if there are any questions? So then we take the opportunity, we ask our uh, followers on, f on Facebook for, for questions. And somebody wrote to us who is obviously uh, interested in, in data, but also a Star Trek fan, because he said <laughs> when Captain Picard from that TV series faced a complex problem, he would always listen to his team colleague data. And the question is basically, are Chinese companies listening to data enough already? What would you say, Scott? Yeah, I, I would say the survey tells us not as much as the rest of the world. I think, again, the challenge has become there's too much data, so we have to get past big data and get to the smart data that can drive a decision. So I think the, the pace of decision making has increased in China. 
so the scale becomes a problem. Um, there's a quality problem, getting quality data that's unstructured and, and harnessing the value. So I'd say there's a lot of opportunity. Uh, it's starting, it's in the early days, uh, but there's a lot of opportunity to use it more and more in decision making. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, there's a gentleman in back. If you could state your uh, name and organization, please. Thank you. QQ.com. Uh, I got a question for the, uh, uh, what are the uh, obstacles that Chinese companies don't use the, uh, fully use the data? I want to know why. Uh, I'm sorry, could you just so repeat what are, the, what are the main obstacles for Chinese companies to use uh, data more efficiently? So I think Scott touched on a couple. Let me start and then my colleagues will join in. So one, just the availability of data you know, in, is, is just not exactly the same as it is in, in, in other parts of the world. So I think first and foremost that there's an issue, uh, there's an issue there. Uh, secondly, there's a dearth of, uh, of, of skilled data technicians, data analysts, statisticians, econometricians, PhDs, data scientists, all of that everywhere in the world right now. And, and China's not different in that regard. So I think that's also uh, an area that um, you know will be will be an obstacle, and um, and then you know again I, I think just some of it is just you know some thinking differently and uh, making decisions in different ways that are not e is not easy things for organizations and so I'm sure China will overcome that, um, but as we see right now the emphasis and the focus is is not quite there as much as it is on the leading technology. I, I would just add shifting the mindset away from just the revenue focus, using data around revenue focused strategies and being more enterprise focused. Um, there's plenty of data to use. It's where are you gonna use it to be more operationally efficient, more customer uh, focused, et cetera, versus just looking at the revenue side of it. That, that's just a change that has to happen. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Yes, the lady in the back, please. Out of the 50 companies you surveyed in China, what kind of enterprises are they? Yeah, we, we did see, and, and intentionally so, we tried to cut a broad swath across the, you know, almost every industry and also in terms of size. Um, we did see, obviously, some of the larger companies in the sample came from some of the larger countries, but in, in no case was one country looking at just one particular size or sector of company. Thank you. So can I see a show of hands if there are any other questions? Well, then I'll, I'll take the privilege and ask one more question that we received through social media. Um, actually, we received it in different, different forms uh, several times uh, from, uh, from our Chinese audience especially. And you mentioned skills, and it's very much in line with what Professor Schwab says, that human capital and, and talent is actually the currency that will decide the competitiveness of, of enterprises in the future. What, sh what should I study if I'm a, a young Chinese person? Uh, what should I study to, uh, to work in that field? What would, you, what would your personal recommendation be? Well, having uh, two boys in university myself, <laughs> um, I, you know, it's funny, you know, when, I, when I got out of school, everybody was running towards Wall Street and, and they wanted to get involved in investment banking. Now, this is actually the area that seems to have all the juice, whether it's around you know, the technology itself or the analytics piece. And so I think we are going to see, we are already seeing and will continue to see uh, very much of a drive towards that type of, um, you know, whether it's statistics or um, econometrics or just, you know, mathematics, certainly computer science. I think we're going to see continued focus in that, uh, in that space. Okay. And I would just add a, a, another unique perspective would be the visualization of data. It really requires a different set of skills. So experience, design, creative thinking, a way to visualize such massive amounts of data is a different skill set. So beyond the, the, the math and science of statistics, the art of creating a simple message around complex data, that's the hard skill to find right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, just maybe uh, add one more on the creativity side. And as Chinese students, they follow a lot of textbooks. The key is just open-minded, be creative on how to use the data to solve the problems, taking a more problem-solving approach mindset in using the data. 
Thank you very much. And uh, mindful of the filled uh, schedule of the gentlemen on the panel, uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, and uh, stay tuned on the 30th of September, the seventh annual digital IQ survey of uh, PwC will be launched. Um, stay tuned for that and thank you for joining. Thank you.